What is up guys? 70 Savage here. We have a very exciting day today. We are starting a brand new project, the van floor. What we ended up doing with the floor was a few different steps. Step number one, we traced out what the floor shape needed to look like. We then used that to cut out our Baltic birch subfloor boards that are going on the floor. After sealing the floorboards with primer, we then cut out our lawn seal vinyl floor, as well as a thin layer of insulation that's going underneath the floorboards. I'll talk about that when we get to it. And then we finally bolted down the floor, stuck the lawn seal to the floorboards, and we had ourselves the completed project. So I'm 6'5", and once you put the ceiling panels inside of the Sprinter van, it's only about 6'3 in height. So I already have to crouch even if I have maximum amount of height available. I did not want to build this subfloor up and have like an inch and a half or two inches. Another reason to have as much vertical space as possible in the van, other than being vertically challenged like me, is that you get more space for your cabinets. In fact, the Space at the bottom of the van is the widest cross section of the van. Therefore, it has the most volume to create your drawers and cabinets, etc. So using the methods in this video to make the slimmest possible subfloor like I did provides a lot of different benefits. If you are new to the channel, we just finished our very first van conversion. We are now starting on our second van build. I am super stoked for this one. If you are not yet a subscriber and you wanna watch this entire van build unfold, right now is the perfect time to subscribe as you will see every single step along the way. And if you like this video as you're watching it, I would really appreciate if you slap that like button below. Now let's go ahead and get into it. The very first decision that we had to make was a pretty important one, and it's which one of these colors and textures of flooring did we actually want to use? We started with this stack, we narrowed it down to this stack, and we ended up with this one right here. It's a wood type texture and kind of a light gray material. This is the product name and code, if you guys are interested in using this one. This brand Lawn Seal makes ridiculously strong floors. This is very different than the flooring that you're gonna get at your local flooring store. This stuff is designed to be much more durable. The nice part about this van is it did come with a floor installed already. This floor is gonna save us a ton of time as we're going to remove it and use it as a template for our plywood subfloor. Now for the very first step of this installation, we have to remove the factory floor. We have prepped most of the floor here to get ready to pull off. The way that we have done that is by adding all of these little pieces of tape with notes for those edges. And for those edges, we're adding 3 eighths of an inch. For the wheel wells, we are adding an eighth of an inch. For the back, we're adding an eighth of an inch as well. The front is a little bit strange. You have these factory floor panels here that have this little extension piece. I didn't like the way that the factory floor did the transition between the subfloor and the floor panels. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a whole inch here and then I'm gonna router the bottom side of that wood so that it sits pretty much flush over the tops. And then the final change we're gonna make to this subfloor is we're gonna add an extension here to support the galley unit. We're basically going to continue this line of the factory floor, which lines up with this face right here. So this spot right here is all gonna be covered with wood. Something that we are gonna do different this time around is we're gonna retain these factory bolt hole locations. Some of you guys already know we're building this van for the zombie apocalypse. And when that happens, there's not gonna be roads everywhere that you want to go. You're going to need to go off road and the van needs to stay intact while zombies are chasing us down. Any additional strength that we can get without adding too much weight, we're going to do. The bottom side of this factory panel, they have a very thin layer, about an eighth inch thick of this, what appears to be sound deadening type material. They also have something kind of weird. It's just two pieces of Velcro. You could literally just peel this off and it's just it's regular Velcro. They just didn't Velcro it. There's also a couple of floor supports here. Those are just a little bit of extra support to fill in these voids right here as there's quite a bit of overhang and you wouldn't want that to sink down when you step on it. The intermediary material that we're gonna use before we transfer onto the expensive Baltic birch, just to make sure we have the perfect fit for this floor is this white material here. They call it corrugated plastic or plastic cardboard. I normally use regular cardboard for my templates. I spent a little bit of extra money this time to get these sheets. We completed the floor template. So stoked with how this turned out, guys. The lines came out so good. It's super, super precise. It's way more precise than the factory floor was. As you can see, we also retain the factory bolt hole locations. The way that I do that when I need a really precise hole in a really precise location 
is I'll cut a bigger square. In this case, I cut a two inch by two inch square. And then I cut a bunch of one and a half by one and a half inch squares. I place them perfectly over the bolt holes because you have the room to do that when it's a smaller square. And then I taped them so that we have the perfect locations for these bolts. We are going to come back tomorrow to start cutting the official panels. All right, guys, so we have ourselves a little bit of a debacle here. I'm kind of starting to think that I'm going crazy or something because I bought these five by five foot sheets here. You can tell I have the templates lined up on this side. When we come over to this side, we run out of five by five sheets. So uh, that's a pretty big problem. Our sheets are not long enough to span the width of the floor. We have to go back to the wood store and buy four, four by eight sheets of half inch Baltic birch plywood which is gonna be quite a costly mistake as this plywood is not cheap. Sometimes that is the price you have to pay when you're a DIYer. We basically just wanna trace these things out, get the whole locations marked, and then we are good to start cutting. We're gonna use a couple of different tools in order to cut out these pieces of plywood. First one that we're gonna use is a brand new tool for this van build. I did not have this in the last one and I'm so glad that I have it now. This is called a track saw. This is gonna help us cut any really long, really straight lines. Link to this in the description below. Second up, we have the jigsaw. So for small little cuts like this and anything around it at all, you're gonna need a jigsaw. This is my favorite tool from the last fan build. We're using the same one here. Link to this in the description as well. So a combination of that for the straight lines and this for the curvy lines should be good to go. I have never had that efficient of a cutout before. Having these two tools is gonna to make making panels so much easier than last build. I also pride myself with my skills on the jigsaw. But look at how perfectly straight those lines are. I'll secretly admit that I ended up cutting a lot of my long straight panels with the jigsaw before, so I got pretty good at cutting long straight lines with it. But now we got this guy, they're looking even better. We also got the cordless sander. This thing is so convenient compared to the one with the big extension cord. We're just rolling in luxury this time around. This is just the luxurious van build. The first piece is in. All of the four holes line up perfectly. Off to a pretty good start here. Pretty exciting. We have 100% of the panels cut and laid out in the van. They came out so, so good. Check out these lines, guys. It fits so well. You remember last time I could fit my fingers easily down the sides and now the tolerances are much, much tighter than the factory floor. You know, I don't wanna brag or anything, but I'm pretty much a god with the jigsaw. Look at how smooth that cut is. Now all we have to do is add a couple more finishing touches. Since I'm gonna have this water tank here, this is an over wheel well, 32 gallon water tank that just fits over the wheel well. It's pretty dang cool. I have to router out a section right here that's about a quarter inch deep so that I can fit a quarter inch aluminum L bracket and attach that to the 8020. We have the overlap with the factory flooring on the front side here. Right now it's not great because that factory flooring is kind of thick and this is sitting on top of it. Therefore, this panel isn't lying flat on the floor. I need to router out about half an inch of space on that whole front strip so that the factory flooring sits underneath it. For this panel right here, around the wheel wells, it's a little bit frustrating because there's this bead of caulk that they put on in the factory and that actually raises up this panel about an eighth of an inch. So we got all of our markings. Now it's time to get these finishing touches done. Another extremely boneheaded mistake. We routered the wrong damn side of this first plug. We were supposed to router that side but I got so stoked that I just started routering and it was on this side. So guess where we're headed? Back to the wood store. It's actually kind of okay though, because since we're going back there, that motivated me to measure this right here. These spacers that came with the factory floor to support the edges that we just marked out actually are not half inch plywood. They are one centimeter thick plywood. So I just called the same wood store and asked if they had one centimeter, they don't. They do have three eighth inch Baltic birch, which is really, really close to one centimeter so on the mistakes topic if you guys don't find that valuable just let me know i can also just remove them up to y'all so remember that this piece right here was raised a little bit because it had to sit on top of this now that i have this router out and i'm doing a bunch of routering i could just router an eighth inch in the bottom of the edge of the wheel well and that will allow the entire floor to lay perfectly flat we finished both of the wheel well router outs we did three sixteenths depth. I have never made this much sawdust in such a short amount of time. Look at my socks. 
Now it is time to recreate these support strips that came on the factory floor. So thankful that we messed up yesterday and ended up going back to the wood store to get the 3 8 piece of Baltic birch because I would have needed that today. And the wood store is closed this weekend. So if I didn't make that mistake, I would have cost myself a whole weekend of work. Crazy to me how that kind of stuff works out. This happened to me all the time on the last van as well. Magically, something just happens in your favor, completely out of your control. Thanks to whoever's up there, dead relative or whatever, looking out for me. Dang it, guys. The second we get out here and get our whole work set up for a nice long day of work, it starts raining. People in the sky, I know yesterday was a lot, but uh, can I also ask you to... Make this stop. Hey, they listened. We're back in business, baby. This right here is a completed floorboard. We have the supports that are going underneath. I put a little wood glue on the underside of these and then Brad nailed them in. This one was kind of fun. We got some cool angles here. Guys, I am so stoked right now. We just laid the floor in for the first time completely. It's still loose laid. We haven't glued it or anything. This right here is what it looks like. The only actually exposed bolt holes are gonna be that one and that one. And then finally, we put additional support on the edges here where there was no support. So you can step on this now, you can put all your weight or I'll be able to mount all of my cabinets on those locations and won't have to worry about the floor bending. They'll be completely supported on all of the sides. It's like the foundation of a house. But in 10 years, if you made a crappy foundation and your house starts falling down, people worry about it. In 10 years, we're not gonna have the floor bowing or anything and it's gonna make me sleep so much better at night. I put a lot of thought into how I was actually going to waterproof these panels. The solution that I came to was this stuff right here. This is the heavy duty version. We're gonna put it on with a four inch roller, a little paintbrush for the holes and stuff. First coat came out great. So in between coats, hand sand it with a 220 grit and then tack cloth the dust off. The panels are 100% primered. We have them fully sealed. With two coats of primer, it came out pretty thick. There's a solid white coating on these guys. I think it's pretty much impermeable by water. We did make a last minute decision though to get some insulation for underneath the floorboards. Uh, and that's gonna take about nine days to come. So I'll see you guys in nine days. Coming at you just three days later instead of nine. Big shout out to Impact Products who I bought this from. All right guys, so a brief explanation of why I picked this insulation. This is 3M Thinsulate insulation. Now it's a little bit different than the insulation that you put in the walls of the van. This stuff right here is the SM200L. It only expands out to half an inch. There's a few things that I wanted. Number one, I wanted a kind of piece of padding in between the subfloor and the ribs of the van. Reason number two, the obvious one, thermal insulation. What I'm trying to prevent is cold coming through the van floor in the middle of winter when you're parked out in the middle of nowhere in a snowstorm. It's also going to provide a thermal break in between the metal of the van and the wood of the subfloor. And lastly, I did want sound deadener on the floor of the van. If you look at the product specs on 3M's website, they mention all over the place that it's really good acoustic insulation as well. We got the first piece of insulation glued to the back of the wood subfloorboard. It's looking pretty nice. Let's go ahead and lay this puppy in the van. The insulation is filling the gaps perfectly. This is working out exactly how we wanted it. The insulated version of the floor has been laid down, hoping that this is the final time we ever have to lay down this floor. So we ordered our lawn seal floor about a week ago through Dave, who owns Van Life Customs. They make super cool vans. Check them out if you're interested. They also offer consulting. I've asked him a lot of questions about how to build vans, and he has helped me quite a bit with both Vangelina and the new van. I was expecting it to take about a month since all this COVID craziness. We're now a week later, and we have ourselves the full sheet of lawn seal. Great surprise. I was taking my post coffee poop this morning, just chilling, and I get a notification delivered from lawn seal and I was like, holy crap. The first time that we're seeing the vinyl flooring looks pretty dang good. So working with this lawn seal specialty vehicle flooring, I feel so much less pressure to be super, super careful with the floor. Last time I mentioned I use house vinyl flooring. That stuff was pretty sensitive, to be honest. I felt like if I did something wrong, it would rip or tear. This stuff, not at all. Ready to start cutting. I am shocked with how smooth this stuff cuts, guys. This is like the smoothest, most satisfying feeling cutting through this vinyl. Check out this wheel well. I was super stressed about this and it came out perfect. So once we laid the vinyl in here, a couple of the holes were off. I believe it was because this sheet was really hot when I cut it. 
And then once it adapted, it kind of shrunk a little bit. What we're doing to correct that is we're just cutting off the side that's missing. All of these are gonna be underneath cabinets anyway. So it's pretty much just until they're in cabinets that I want them to look nice. So the way that we're concealing these bolt holes right here that aren't going to be seen in the top of the floor is we just added those little wood discs and then covered it with a smooth layer of silicone. This one right here particularly came out great. It is a completely smooth surface with sealed silicone that will allow the floor to sit on top and be completely unseen. Today we are starting on taping down the edges of the floor. We're planning on leaving it loose laid. We're not gonna put any adhesive. We're just gonna put all of this tape along the outside perimeter. And hopefully that's strong enough to keep the floor down even with all that expansion and contracting going on. The trim is done. Super, super strong. This look right here is a little bit of a sneak peek as to what the whole design of the van is gonna look like. That kind of industrial look where you can see all the screws. The very final step of this floor installation, we have the caulk. And we are gonna put it all around the perimeter of the entire floor. All of the sawdust, all of the stray chunks of aluminum that come when you're drilling holes, etc., fall onto the floor. All that crap will eventually just build up and hang out underneath your floor. If it's steel, it might rust. So basically caulking all of the edges of your floor just makes cleaning way easier. It's also nice if you spill a drink or something, it's not gonna go off the side of your floor and hang out underneath it's just gonna pull up and you can vacuum it or wipe it final project let's go one thing you might have noticed is that i took this pillar off right at the start of the floor installation it gives us quite a bit of extra room to work with in there this is silicone caulk so it's really hard to apply and make it look absolutely perfect we use this little caulk application tool i'll put a link to this in the description below we masked off the lines so that there are nice and straight lines all across where we applied it we basically put a bead in, just barely overfill it, just a tiny, tiny bit, and then drag that tool all the way across. Always remember to use protection on your cock. Wouldn't want that stuff getting anywhere. The moment has finally come. The floor is finally complete. It is 100% done and it looks so good. I'm super stoked with how it came out. So I had a few different main goals for this floor. Number one, it had to be pretty lightweight. This build is going to have a ton of weight in it between the batteries and the water tank. So I wanted to trim down on weight as much as possible. At the same time, I wanted it to be super, super strong. I basically wanted the van to be able to flip over and the floor to stay in place. So in order to do that, we retained all of the factory bolt hole locations. And then third, obviously I wanted it to look awesome. Before we started this installation, the van weighed 5,955 pounds. After installing the floor, the total weight of this van came out at 6,090 pounds. That brings the total weight of the floor installation to 135 pounds of new weight added to the van. The cost of materials for this floor, including the Baltic birch and most expensively the Lawn Seal vinyl, came in at about $1,450. That does not include any of the mistakes that I made where I had to go buy the Baltic birch twice. I am so stoked with how this floor came out. I hope that you learned something from this video. If you did like this video, I'd really appreciate if you slap that like button below. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys next time.